So joining us today is former GP rider, been in the paddock since he was 16 years old, many years, GP factory rider, GP podium visitor, Petr Petrov. But for this year, things changed for you in the GP paddock as you became team manager of AIT Racing Team. Just how did you find the role after being a rider for so many years? I'm sure you needed quite the adjustment. Uh, yeah, it was not so easy. At the beginning, I thought uh, I didn't thought it would be easy, of course, but I thought it would be a little bit less uh, stress uh, rather than being a rider, because obviously, being as a rider, you have to also yeah, you have to perform also as a team manager. But I mean, as a rider, is uh, all the stress is on you, and I didn't realize that there's even more stress being as a team manager because you. There's other people depending on you, and you have to do your job so other riders can uh, perform and. It, also with mechanics, you need to make happy sponsors, and it's uh, it's quite a hard 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 work actually. It's, it's a long days uh, sometimes, and but uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I think I adapted quite well to it. Uh, yeah, I, I had good time. Of course, yeah, there were days that was uh, really stressful, especially at the beginning of the season when yeah I was not uh, used to it. Uh, I had to make the plannings for the travels for everything. That was a bit stressful because. I didn't want to mess up, uh, but uh, once I got into that, uh, got used to it and got a little bit more experience, of course, uh, I, there's still a lot, a lot for me to learn, but uh, I actually enjoy it and I'm looking forward to continuing uh, this job. And the, at the start of this season, the, the, the team signed three riders, Federico Tuani, Xavier Cazal and the Bulgarian kid, Tushev. Just how were all these guys to work with? And obviously everyone's different. Did it take you a while to know maybe what buttons to press with certain riders and, and when maybe not to speak or things like that? Yeah, that was that was also another adjustment for me because I know how I am as a rider. I know how it needs to be talked to me. Uh, but obviously everybody's different. I think uh, I thought I managed this quite well, uh, especially with the Bulgarian kit with Toshev. I think uh, we did some good steps. Uh, it was his first year uh, in uh, in Europe, out of Bulgaria, and uh, 125, and also directly European Championship. Unfortunately, he had uh, two injuries, but uh, I think he, he improved a lot during the season. And uh, with him was quite okay. He was also staying at my house, so it made it a little bit easier on this side for me. Uh, with Xavier, uh, also, it was quite, quite easy. I mean... Uh, Unfortunately, he decided to mm -hmm. to call it a career uh, mid season uh, for various reasons. But uh, also, it was quite easy to work with. And uh, he, unfortunately, I don't think his season went as he would have liked. I think the results were not there. I thought that in practice he was riding really well, but uh, then once the race came, he was uh, for some reason struggling. So that was a bit of a shame. But uh, yeah, other than that, I think uh, I. He did good and he was a really nice kid to work with and really nice kid. Uh, with Federico, it was a little bit more complicated. Uh, I mean, he's. Uh, I think he underestimated the difference between European and MX2. And uh, it's it's quite a big step, even if some for some riders it's a bit easy. For some riders, it takes a bit time. Uh, also, I mean, having to do one race GP or two race GP or three race GP and having to do a full season, uh, it's quite a step. And uh, yeah, Federico was not the easiest guy, I think. Also mentally, he struggled quite a lot this season. Uh, I think uh, results were not there and then, uh, yeah, it was not easy for him. So yeah, I think mentally it was really, really hard for Federico and I think he, he needs to work on his mental side. And of course, uh, speed was uh, quite, quite far off, I think. And be, being a rider is tough enough in the paddock, but when, whenever you transition the team manager, at one weekend you have at least two riders to run around after, sometimes three. I'd imagine you're a lot more busy as a team manager than you would have been as a rider. Uh, yeah, because I have to focus on three guys. and like uh, At one point it was uh, three different categories. So yeah, it was. Uh, this was the hard part. And uh, you don't really have, once the weekend starts, you don't really have a time to rest. Uh, you're just running left and right. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it took me time to adjust, and but I actually enjoyed it. It's it like I said, it's it's quite a lot stressful because yeah, 
I need to look after the guys and uh, I want them to do good, but also I need to be hard on them and sometimes I'm worried also about them. Of course, I don't want anybody to get injured. So, you know, it's a, it's a fine line uh, being uh, being nice and being hard on them and so on. So <clears throat> it was uh, it was interesting and uh, like I said, you know, I learned a lot and um, I try to learn also from other guys that have done this job uh, longer than me. So, yeah, I try to, to do the best I can and hopefully continue growing and learning uh, more about the, about it. Yeah, and as you touched on earlier there, Kazal, unfortunately, he decided to quit from racing at a high level. So what was it like then to try and find a fill-in rider? Was, was it difficult? And in the end, you decided to draft in William Kleeman for the end of the 2024 MX2GP, MX2GP season. Really nice kid, really nice family. What was it like to work with him? Uh, with William, it was good. Actually, I thought that he he did good. Uh, it's never easy jumping into a mid-season, and uh, especially he was injured. So I really enjoyed working with him. Really nice kid, really nice family, and was uh, really simple. And uh, yeah, that was that was actually really, really nice. Uh, uh, he was a nice kid, and I enjoyed working with him. I thought that uh, it would uh, proper winter like the others and uh, being with us from the beginning of the season, I think he could have uh, done really good results. But okay, for one or another reason, uh, he had he was with another team and then he had to switch to us. And But once he switched, I think uh, uh, he did he did quite okay. You know, like uh, he finished, I think, 15 in Sweden and uh, in Spain, he was also somewhere around there. So he did uh, not too bad, not too bad at all. And... Um- Whenever I mean you were in the GP paddock as a as a rider as a racer, I think from fifteen or sixteen, I would say the sport has probably changed quite a lot since then. And, and of course, you're working with a new generation as well. What's that like? I feel like nowadays riders probably have a lot more distraction. Yeah, I started racing at fifteen, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's the paddock, the riders, everything has changed so so much. Uh, Maybe for some good, but uh, there is definitely a lot of bad. I think, uh, like you say, distractions. I think social media is uh, mm-hmm. there's some guys uh, cares a lot about social media, which I don't really like this. Uh, not because I'm old school or anything, but I mean, I think the athletes should be paid to perform on the track, not so much on mm-hmm. social media. I don't think this is what brings uh, satisfaction in the rider's career. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, we have to also, I have to adapt and I think everybody has to adapt to this new generation. I think uh, there is the top guys, of course, they work really, really hard. Uh, but I think there's riders that are, that are at the back, uh, say this way. And uh, they, sh- in my opinion, they should work as hard as the first mm-hmm. one and harder so they can go forward. And uh, I don't think they do. I think they focus too much on social mm-hmm. media and uh just uh, kind of showing off and saying we're doing Grand Prix, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is uh, not uh, not not what it should be. You know, like yeah. they should be looking to perform. I don't say it's everybody, but I think there's quite a lot of guys now are focusing too much on social media and not uh, the actual job. You know, yeah. So it's it's like it's, but it is what it is. I mean, I understand uh, that sponsors care about social media, and uh, they need we need to be myself also and the team present on social media. It's just uh, like you said, you know, 15 years ago, there was no sponsor, then the teams cared more about results than yeah. social media. And looking ahead to 2025, I'm somebody that loves motocross and, and, and I love MXGP. I think there's, at the minute, there's five teams closing their doors ahead of the 2025 season. Should we be worried about the future of the sport in Europe? Well, I don't think so. I mean,. Uh of course, uh, the economy is not not great at the moment. I don't think that in front can do any different. Of course, maybe they can do something small different, but I don't think that this will stop teams from stopping. I think it's more the economy and manufacturers uh, cutting budgets, sponsors cutting budgets. I think also the sponsors outside of the industry are struggling, or in others uh, in other uh, uh, yeah outside of motocross. So, yeah, I mean, the economy is not great at the moment. I think with the flyaways and stuff, it's also not making uh, making it easy. But I don't think that, that this will actually change much uh, 
for the teams not to stop. Mm. I mean, there. To be honest, I, I don't know what we have to do to mm. to prevent from teams stopping and from how can we make the championship uh, better. But uh, I think on one hand, the front is doing a good job. Mm. I mean, uh, we are going to every country. Uh, it's called World Championship, so I think this is this is how it should be. Uh, of course, uh, there is also new manufacturers, new new coming in, so it must be they must be doing something right. Also, you know what I mean. So yeah, it depends. I think on which side you're looking at it. And obviously, there's twenty World Championship events now, and there's always at least five or six flyways. I'm just trying to remember the year you broke into. Was there as many GPs as twenty back then? Maybe twenty from a team point of view. Like as a fan, I love twenty GPs, but maybe from a G t- team point of view, it might be a bit too much, especially yeah, with I think the flower. This also, as a as a rider, sometimes it's it's a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. When I started racing, GP was fifteen. Mm-hmm. Then we went to seventeen, I think. 17. Then to eighteen. Mm-hmm. But I remember when we started it was fifteen. But we were still doing a uh, a lot of racing outside of uh, outside of GP. We used to do the championship or Belgium championship. There were still more races outside of GP. Okay. Mm-hmm. The stress is completely different, and uh, everything else. So this, this of course, uh, takes the pressure off of the rider. But yeah, I think twenty GP is maybe a lot, especially when we have to do three in a row. Mm-hmm. I think that's uh, that's quite heavy. But yeah, when we look at uh, MotoGP and Formula, it's also mm-hmm. a lot of racing. Even if it, of course, it's a different sport. Yeah. It's everything is different. But yeah, it's a. Uh, it, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. And for the 2025 season, just what what's the plans for yourself in AIT racing? Any riders confirmed? Is it confirmed you'll definitely still be in the paddock? Just what can you tell me about next year? Uh, for the moment, uh, the plan is to be to continue. Of course, uh, we would like to grow and to get better as a team. Uh, at the moment, we can't confirm any riders or, or uh, what we're exactly doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, we will know this in the next week or so. But yeah, it's uh, we would like to continue. We would like to grow and make the yeah, make the team better and uh, yeah, go take every year step and step forward, and uh, we see how far we can get. And have you got an idea of what championships you're going to contest? Obviously, you mentioned doing you know supporting three riders in three different categories is quite heavy. Is that is that still the plan next year, or, or maybe you'll focus on one AMX and one more championship, or or still not decided? Uh, Still not hundred percent decided. I think we will most likely have uh, one one twenty five kit, okay. a rider, and then uh, we still have not decided if we will be EMX two fifty or MX two. Okay. This is still uh, to be decided. At, at the moment, I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully, like I said, we will know in the next uh, ten days or two weeks. And you raced a couple of GPs yourself this year. You, you, you picked the nice and easy tracks, Lommel and Arnhem, but I guess you live in Belgium and have done since you were 15. So for you, the tracks maybe aren't as tough as what they are for people that have never roast, raced those conditions before. Just for, what was it like being back in the paddock as a rider? And did that maybe take a bit of pressure off that weekend? Or did you still have to play your team manager role as well? Uh, it was it was heavy, really, really <laughs> heavy because uh, I didn't choose the easy ones, mm. but I enjoyed those ones and uh, yeah, I still it took a little bit the pressure off of being as a team manager, but I still had to do my job as a team manager. Okay. Uh, thankfully, we had only one rider at the time, and also in Arnhem we had uh, William also, but MX two rather than have the three categories. So that was uh, that was a bit the pressure off. But yeah, it was it was hard work, but I enjoyed it. I actually wanted to do way better than I did, even if I was I don't know 18th in Lomo or something like this, and 15th on Saturday. I still thought I can do way better. Uh, it's just uh, I struggle with bike setup and stuff. And obviously, uh, doing a full championship and and one race, uh, it's it's quite different. Uh, we don't really have the same tracks uh, to practice and to test and uh, so on but I still enjoyed it and uh, actually looking forward to do a few also next year yeah and do you ride that much obviously you don't you didn't race that much this year at GP level anyway but did you still ride quite a lot and is that good for the riders you're helping because then you're able to maybe go out and track and show them how to do something yeah that was uh, that was uh, the goal at the beginning of the season Uh, I started riding quite late I started riding only in February, or February, end of February, I think March. Uh, 
So that was a bit of a struggle. But yeah, I still practice once in a while with them and uh, I try to show them and to push them sometimes because uh, I'm still quite much faster than the riders we had this year. So that was that was fun. And uh, yeah, I get to push them, but I would have liked to ride for sure more. But uh, yeah, it's, it, my first job is to be a team manager and to make sure the team uh, runs smoothly. And obviously the second job is then uh, focusing on myself, riding and stuff like this. But uh, yeah, it was more or less like this. But yeah, I think it's uh, beneficial for the riders to, obviously with my experience and being in the paddock for so many years and uh, having achieved uh, some good results, to be behind them and to go in front of them, to push them and to, to show them sometimes uh, how to do. Of course, every rider has different style and different technique and so on. But uh, yeah, it's still from outside, I think I can help. And uh, my goal has always been to help them and to try to get the best out of them. And uh, especially for the young riders and to to show them uh, the right way to work and uh, so on. And next year, obviously, like you touched on, you, the priority for you is being a team manager. But have you got any ideas? Like you'll obviously still ride because you enjoy it. But in terms of racing, do you still want to do a couple of GPs and maybe national level? Would that interest you? Well, I don't think national level. I will for sure do Dutch Masters because okay. this is a championship yeah. that I really enjoy. And uh, it's still really high level. There's still many good top from GP riders. And that's something I really like. Uh, I will for sure do some international races, maybe Hoxton and uh, I don't know yet at the moment. And yeah, my plan is still to do some GPs. I don't know what, where, probably Lomo, Arnhem. Yeah. And uh, we see how I feel. If I feel fast enough uh, to do decent results i don't want to be there just to be there i want to be there to do to be able to perform and to do results so if i feel like i'm maybe fast enough to to do good then i will continue to do maybe some more if not uh yeah it is what it is well, i will do the ones that i enjoy and so on and you've obviously been in belgium for so many years now i think 15 when you rocked up um you've obviously got a family there now is belgium home for you now do you think you'll be there pretty much forever or do you maybe see yourself going back to Bulgaria in the future, or are you just content living in Belgium? Well, I'm quite happy living in Belgium. Obviously, my wife uh, is from Belgium, and uh, my kid is born in Belgium mm -hmm. uh, and goes to school here. So, at the moment, it's uh, my home, and uh, yeah, I'm quite happy here. You never know what the future holds and what can happen. So you never know. Uh, maybe my whole family will move to Bulgaria one day. Maybe we'll stay here forever. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the moment, I'm. I'm content and happy to be here and uh, like I said you know my wife is from here and uh, her work is here and the team is based in Belgium mm -hmm. so I think for motocross uh, there's at this moment uh, much more opportunities in Belgium and uh, yeah that's that's it for the moment I, this is my home now. Well Peter thank you very much for your time much appreciated and good luck and I'm sure you'll I'll see you in the paddock next year. Yeah, thank you man. Thank you.